What is, in your estimation, the biggest issue facing America that very few people are talking about that's not making its way, for example, onto Fox? Well, that's a good question. I mean, there's probably a lot, but I'm just going to, you know, usually go with your gut. I'm going to give my first answer. Uh, my pastor from the um, uh, church that I was in for about 20 something years in, in Austin, High Park Baptist Church, recently put out a post detailing the extent to which the um, what's called nuns, right? People have no, no affiliation with church is on the rise. So if you go back to two, I mean, these numbers are going to be rough They're from my head. 2007, I think we were at about 16 percent of Americans who checked the box saying no affiliation, right, in terms of their their uh, affiliation with any church, Protestant, Catholic, anything. And now that number is about 28%. That's been about 15 years. We've gone from 16% to 28%. That is stark uh, shift has occurred for people under the age of 50. 70% of those nuns are under 50. Uh, and the uh, target there really is it's also heavily males and, frankly, uh, white population. So... We've got a real problem where we are losing uh, our younger men, men in particular and our younger generation generally. Um, and I'll, that's always been an issue, right? You've got young people and they're exploring and you know, but they kind of had a foundation and they come back to the church and go through life. We got a real problem now. So if you ask me if there's something, it's a cultural issue, right? And, and we start losing our soul as a nation in terms of what our founding principles were built upon when we move away from those principles of Western civilization, it goes to the heart of the fight in Israel right now. It goes to the heart of the fight right now about our border. It goes to the heart of the fight right now in terms of our uh, woke policies and, you know, that a man can have a baby and all that kind of stuff. It's all being turned on its head. So if that answers your question, I'd say that's that, that's concerning to me. Well, here's what I appreciate what, what you had to say. Anybody that li- believes in freedom and the concept of limited government also has to acknowledge that society and culture has to rest upon something else that guides morality. Yeah. If you don't turn to the government to define, hey, what's the way to live a good life, you have to have some guiding light, some principle. And it's just a matter of uh, historical fact that in America that was a Christian-based value system that guided people. And if you are cast adrift and, and you don't have some affiliation, you're going to seek something. You're going to seek some moral guidance. You're going to seek some purpose. And I do think, to your point, what we're seeing so much with young men, I actually think that, you know, the, the proliferation of school shootings, I think that, that the, the rising rates of mental health issues all can come back to this foundational uh, erosion of, hey, what is it that gives you meaning? No, I agree. Well, you could, you stated it very well. I mean, I would say, you know, what was it that brought Americans from all walks of life in 1944 to sit in the, in the foxholes in Bastogne together? Whether you were, grew up in Brooklyn or whether you grew up in West Texas or you grew up in Iowa or you grew up in, you know, San Francisco. You came together and we had largely a fabric thread that held us all together. Belief in our, our country, yes, a patriotism built upon, you know, our belief in shared values, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, what we taught our kids in schools, but also just who we are, who we were. That is getting torn apart. Right? People don't realize, and there's a connection here, of uh, 50%, I'm sorry, 50 million people, that is about 16% of Americans, are foreign born. Now, that's higher than any level, even going back to the 19th century. But it's concerning now in particular because of what I just said, right? We're breaking away from our foundational principles. We're breaking away from having people churched. And we're not teaching our kids in schools that America is great, that Western civilization is strong, that the Constitution is good, that God exists. We're not teaching any of that stuff. We're teaching the opposite. America is evil. Don't believe in the Constitution. Tear down statues of Thomas Jefferson. You can't talk about God. Uh, Men can have babies, right? We are breaking down everything that bound us together. So how on earth can you then unite, right? That's, that's I think, the foundational question for us heading into, you know, the, the future of our country going forward. So then that brings me to this. I want to I ask you about your colleague, Congressman Ilhan Omar. Uh, she gave a speech. The translations, she gave it, it wasn't in English. Uh, the translations of which suggest she said something like her interests are Somalia first and that her role as she sees it inside of Congress is to guide the American government toward um, the interests of Somalia. She also talked about her uh, appreciation for whatever it is, the king or president of, of, of Somalia. Um, you know, Congressman, and we can get into this a little bit uh, to the amount of time we have together. Like, you know, I actually, I think on this 
Donald Trump and, and Ron DeSantis probably see the country in the same way, and that is, and I say that because I know you supported Ron DeSantis, um, America first, right? As a modern day, as a modern day, um, not, not necessarily with all its historical ties is what I'm suggesting, but as a modern day iteration is about like, hey, should we be electing people? You know, I didn't like it when your other colleague, and I would tell him this, Congressman Brian Mast wore an IDF uniform on the floor of the Congress. I don't, I don't like that. I don't want a congresswoman from Minnesota saying it's Somalia first. It seems to me a pretty basic issue. If you're elected, you should represent America first. Yeah, well, first of all, and thank you for bringing that up, and I know we're not here to litigate the presidential deal, but I agree with you, actually. I mean, the, the, the President Trump, when he came into office in 2016, and then in his four years in office, espousing America first was absolutely the right thing to do. And it, frankly, it put us in a better footing around the world. He, he was heading us in the right direction with respect to the border. There are a whole lot of positive things to say there, right? I just had my views about someone who could serve for eight years and other things. And, you know, that's been litigated in Governor DeSantis has, has uh, suspended his campaign. But the point matters. We need leaders, not just President Trump as a candidate and, and running this year, not just Governor DeSantis in Florida. We need members of Congress to stand up loudly to advance America first and to check and hold responsible those who are who are doing the opposite. Now, I've got to parse her words and go look at it, right? Whether you censure, like we just recently censured Congresswoman Tlaib for her ridiculous commentary with respect to Israel and, and, and Hamas and, and, and so forth. So we spoke on the record on that, and that was important. Um, we obviously just removed um, Representative Santos for some you know, legal questions. I did not support that removal because due process matters. And he hadn't gone to court, and Congress shouldn't go through that. Not to go down a rabbit trail, but my point is, i got to go think about what you're asking. What is the right approach to handle uh, Congresswoman Omar's uh, uh, statements? But they are reprehensible, and they are deserving of rebuke. And I've raised that issue with the Speaker and with people in the, dele- in the, in the conference, because it matters that the American people see this. I want I mean, to context to what you're talking about for the listeners who haven't, or viewers who haven't seen it. She was standing in a room filled with people, predominantly, it appears, based on the video, to be Somali, uh, pushing that issue of saying, we're going to force them, meaning us, the leaders of this country, to respond to the demands and interests of Somalia. That is a big problem, and that was happening in Minnesota. This is what I was getting at about what's happening with respect to people flooding into our country, 50 million foreign-born. We better get you know some religion really quickly about what we want to do as a country to preserve and protect our own sovereignty in terms of borders and our immigration policy and how we handle it. Well, you, I, so I heard you kind of almost workshopping, and I appreciate you said, I got to yeah. think about what the right approach may be, but I could also hear you kind of workshopping and drawing parallels with Santos mm-hmm. and, and Tlaib in terms of censure and kicking out. And, I, and while we're talking about DeSantis, I believe DeSantis, I can't remember specifically what he's called for when it comes to Omar, but I... I, I what did he say? Was yeah. it? I, think, I, I can't he remember. Said, what, I think he what, said she should be removed from Congress, deported, and something else. I can't remember. It was a strong statement. I mean, he he wasn't equivocal, and I certainly have that same gut reaction. Uh, but I also I always try to you know you got to be measured. It's the former prosecutor in me. I got to go and okay, what are the facts in front of me? What did she say? What are the standards? What is due process? Censure removal? But we've got to have a serious conversation because it was an absolutely absurd statement by a sitting member of Congress.